um, uh, 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 sticky notes that had kind of a faith, uh, you know, what was important to you in terms of getting your space up and going. And they, they just sort of said, here's our priorities. But you know, the interesting, like some was designing the space, um, you know, safety is kind of like in the middle, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> classroom management down at the bottom, excellent, right? You know? But I thought this connecting to other teachers was the number one. And, and you know, just that there's a community out there doing this is the, is the most meaningful uh, accelerant to getting maker spaces out there. And this community is not just teachers, it's you and everybody else in the community that's making. So I, I think what we were trying to do with the mentor program was to look at low cost options for creating maker spaces. Fab labs are great, but they're expensive. We wanted to say, you could start with simple tools, simple materials, you could put the stuff on a cart and wheel around like an AV cart if you have to. But just get it going, get started. Um, what we're really about is not the tools, but self-directed learning, that you can figure out how to do stuff. And collaborations and sharing projects and finding things out on the internet and say, that's cool, I want to make it. And say, do it. So one of the things I want to leave you with a little bit is, I think if we have a joint project, I'm going to let you guys figure out how to build up spaces and, and go to the details. People like you will, will give you his, his designs. I think something we could work on together is to improve training. The quality of instruction, the um, quality of instructors, the quality of materials, uh, the frequency and consistency of classes. But if there's one area that I think we should start in, I, I've, I'll pitch it, it's safety. We should have a standard safety practices across what I call our industry, <laughs> our maker spaces. We don't need to reinvent that. We should actually agree on it, just as other industries do. And we should practice that and monitor and report on it. It's going to pay dividends to us because it'll help with, you know, lower our insurance. And more importantly, it, it, it will help our community um, be able to do more. Uh, you know, certainly as I look at schools, liability and risk are, are some of the things that come up here. And yet, you know, the, the actually instant incidences of injury are fairly low, but there sometimes just has to be one high profile one to kind of turn turn people off on this. So, but again, whether this is Arduino or 3D printing, um, this is kind of what we try to do through the magazine, but I think we can all do more. Um, uh, it's almost like a hybrid model between training, that you might get some of it online, but you need to be with other people and see uh, projects and there are people here often to do that. We just did a survey of of readers, not just, not just readers, but uh, makers through our sites. You know, um, and then they sort of the blue is you know, people that have already taken an online um, class or course. They've taken webinars, face-to-face -face courses. You know, so the community is already doing this. They're used to doing this, and I think we have to figure out how to help them. So. I hope will change about what we're doing over time here. Uh, one is that what happens in hackerspaces stays in hackerspaces. I want it to get out to the world. I want all of you who are creating and inventing and doing projects to find a way to put that up on Twitter or somewhere to let other people know what you're doing because you're not alone and you shouldn't be. Um, it's a safety rule, right? Um, but it's surprising me. I, when I visit those spaces like Dallas, I walk through and how come I didn't know about that? Why don't I know what you're doing? And it's not just me, but just the community. And again, I would love to see Make have a role in that. The second thing I would like to change is the perception that this is a guy thing or a geek thing, or a white guy thing. Um, our future is by incorporating you know, the whole community, not just a portion of it. And I think, I think we will find that maker spaces will take off in certain areas. In other areas, we're gonna have to figure out how do they happen. You know, my friend Jeff Sturgis in Detroit has a maker space in, a, in the basement of a church. And, and this is an African-American community. But the most important thing is he said, the church already has the community. 
I just had to provide, you know, tools and materials. Every Sunday I set up and we do things, you know, in the basement and we have kids um, uh, learning how to do this. And about two years ago for Detroit Maker Fair, we did a thing in the farmer's market and some of his kids came out as Raven, who's a wonderful, about an eight-year-old girl, was teaching adults how to solder in the farmer's market. It was just a wonderful thing. She had a tip jar out there, and she and her friends made a hundred bucks doing, doing soldering. So, uh, but if we can, you know, this has to do a bit with the mainstream, and I'm happy that I think events like Maker Fair, I see have wide appeal, and every year um, they're getting more and more uh, people of, of all uh, possibilities uh, there. So um, I would like to see makerspaces uh, 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 help in that regard. And it may be that it's not about getting people to your makerspace. It might be taking some of the people who use your makerspace to go out into those, old, those other communities and help share what you do. And there are schools and museums and other places that need that kind of mentorship help. They can get the kids, but they don't have the expertise. So there's lots of ways I think we can make this happen. It's an important thing for us to do, and I'm really glad to hear that we have great international representation here because we also don't think this is an American thing either. This is something um, that people are looking at. We have Amika here who does Maker Fair Africa, and he's told me at night he's here because you know, in Lagos and other places, they're trying to create spaces. They see the value of this, and that's that's really important. So, I would just like to wish you all well as makers of spaces and makers of makers. Thank you very much.